We have a quiet week coming up on the macroeconomic front, with the latest annual bank stress tests the main feature in America, and an interest rate decision in New Zealand, pretty much the sum of it, in Asia and Australasia. Meanwhile in Europe, investors will look to a pair of sentiment indicators to see how the economy is getting on there as lockdowns continue to ease. They are the German IFO and the Belgian Coub Synthetique or Synthetic Curve. Both are due out on Wednesday the 24th of June. Like many of these surveys around the world, the IFO Business Climate Index has started to recover. In May, it reached 79.5, a touch above April's all-time low of 74.2, and economists will be hoping that Germany, Europe's largest economy, will show further momentum. Meanwhile, don't overlook the Belgian survey. Odd as it may seem, the views of a few thousand Belgian industrialists seem to be a reasonable guide as to how the headline European Euro Stocks Index performs, although of late, the stock markets run well ahead of sentiment. The Coob made minor progress in May, rising to minus 34.4 from minus 36.1 in April, and you'd imagine that improvement is needed if European stocks are to keep motoring, at least if history is any guide. Company-wise, there are just a couple of FTSE 100 firms with scheduled announcements due this week, although plenty of mid- and small caps are due to publish results or updates. Do note, however, that the Financial Conduct Authority is giving firms extra time in which to prepare their numbers, given the current circumstances, so these dates are still subject to change. On June the 23rd, we've got food producer Cranswick and Scapper, house builder Crest Nicholson and oil services and equipment specialist Petrifac are due on the 24th, then we have retailer Dixon's Carphone, Royal Mail and support services group Mighty on the 25th. And then grocery giant Tesco is due to release a first quarter trading update on Friday the 26th of June. But for me, the stock most likely to cause a big fuss in the week ahead is Auto Trader, when the FTSE 100 firm publishes its delayed full year results on Thursday the 25th of June. New Chief Executive Nathan Coe, who stepped up from the role of Chief Financial Officer in March after the retirement of Trevor Mather, could have wished for an easier start, although he will be pleased to see how the shares have rallied from their lows. Even so, auto trader shares are down by around 10% from where they were a year ago, and economists, analysts and investors alike will be looking to the company for its thoughts on the car market and the wider economy as the UK tentatively emerges from lockdown. The company stopped printing its magazine in 2013 and is now purely online. It's got three key drivers for its revenues, and all three will be analysed closely when the results come out, both for the year just ended and for the year just begun. The first is stock. Physical stock on the site was up 10% year-on-year to 481,000 cars at the end of its first half, with used cars up 3% to 448,000, the vast majority. Retailer forecourts were flat at just over 13,300. The second factor is price. And the third is product. The key here is to look for new offerings, such as dealer finance and new search service, which could help drive advertising. In the first half, for example, platform visits rose 4% to just over 51 million a month. Although, full-page advert views slipped 6% year-on-year to an average of 233 million a month. Now, the world's changed a lot since the first half results were released in November, and car retailers were in lockdown from the end of March until the 1st of June. Auto Trader has put out a few trading trading updates since, however, the key points of which were as follows. A 25% discount for car retail customers in June after free advertising packages in April and May. That took the number of cars on display to 540,000. Cost cuts, the suspension of the shareback program. And finally, a fundraising that raked in 186 million in fresh cash through the sale of 46.5 million new shares. Now, in terms of the headline numbers for the year to March 2020, consensus forecasts are looking for a 5% increase in sales to £372 million and a 5% increase in pre-tax profit to £242 million. However, those figures will include barely a week of the lockdown. Analysts will be looking for colour on how Auto Trader thinks sales and profits will develop going forward, although it's unlikely that Mr Coe will be able to give any specific forward guidance. At the moment... Analysts think sales will drop 24% to £283 million and pre-tax income will skid by 33% to £169 million in the financial year to March 2021. Finally, we'll come to the dividend. The capital raising and the cancellation of a share buyback would suggest that cash preservation is a priority and Mr Coe hinted back in March that a final dividend might not be paid if times remain tough. Intriguingly, analyst consensus forecasts still imply a final dividend for the year just ended of 2.66p a share, on top of the interim payment of 2.4p. 
Now that will give a full year total of 5.06 pence a share. That will be down on the 6.7p offered in the year to March 2019. Uh, analysts seem to think there'll be another reduction in the new financial year as well, judging by the headline consensus estimates. I hope that you and your families are all in good health and good spirits during these difficult times. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again next week.